Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop, back yet again with another transmitter. Look at this. This is a Kodar 85. It's a uh, amateur radio transmitter, AM, uh, 160 metres and 80 metres. Um, quite a nice piece of kit. That's the wrong meter with it. Someone painted that. I'll show you some close-up pictures in a minute. The front panel is missing. The cabinet's missing. Uh, someone's taken the light out of there and put it over there. Um, so someone's had a bit of a fiddle with this, but uh, it all works. It's a little bit. It must have been in the damp somewhere. A little bit of corrosion, a bit of rust on there. And yeah, that's uh, that'll clean up though. It all works. Um, and what someone's done, uh, wasn't me, honest, honest gov, what someone's done on the oscillator here, they've uh, added a little capacitor and they've adjusted the oscillator coil, it now covers the bottom end of the medium wave band. <laughs> Back in the 1960s, these were used um, by unscrupulous pirates, good grief perish the thought. I mean, I'd never do anything like that, obviously. Upright pillar of the community I am. <laughs> he lied stiffly. Um, so yes, it actually covers uh, medium wave. And I tried it out. Well, I'll show you. Um, not on an aerial, of course. I wouldn't connect it to the aerial and play music through it, would I? <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll show you. I put it into a power meter, uh, which you know, built in dummy load in the power meter. Now, it's meant to be I've had a look, it's either 10 or 12 watts DC input. And uh, have a look at this picture on my power meter. There you are, what's that? Seven, getting on for eight watts out. That's not bad. That's actually not bad at all uh, for a little thing like this. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'll show you a couple more uh, pictures in a minute. But um, yeah, unfortunately, as I say, someone's put black paint on here. Uh, I think there was a switch there. Well, I'll try, I'll try to put it back as it was and uh, I'll probably have a go with it on the 160 meter amateur band uh, and perhaps 80 meters. The two variable capacitors, I don't know what's happened, they've been bashed, they, they short out. But I think I've got these, I'm pretty sure I've got the identical types. You can't straighten them because they've been bashed. But uh, it, was, it didn't affect the, the tuning up, the loading. So, yes, that, that's, uh, that's that. I'll show you some more pictures. That's a close-up picture of the, the transmitter. Shame the front panel's missing. You see the little red neon light, that uh, little light there. That's, uh, that shouldn't be there. That should be on the power supply. I don't know why someone's put it there. This, I reckon, was probably used by a pirate in the 60s. They got hold of it did away with the cabinet, you know, did uh, you know, change the oscillator. So anyway, that's the transmitter. There's the close-up of the power supply. I, I don't know why, I don't know, I don't know why someone's done this to it. You know, why discard the cabinet and the front panel? Uh, I mean, you can use it for, you know, pirating. You know, I'm gonna throw away the front panel, really. I don't see the point in that. Perhaps it was just, just mislaid and ended up lost. Um, so there's the power supply, and there's the there's a picture of both side by side. Rather nice. One went on eBay. I saw the, uh, the other day. I think it was 135 pounds, um, but of course it was you know properly in the cabinet. So uh, yeah, I, I paid 15 for it uh, about three years ago. So it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'll, I'll get some pictures of uh, underneath the transmitter in a minute and have a look under there. Rather a nice bit of kit. I found, uh, obviously I can't take a picture of the cabinet, I haven't got it, but uh, just have a look at this. This is, I found this picture on the internet. This is uh, what it should look like with the front panel and the cabinet. As you can see, rather nice. Um, it is a shame it's missing. So that's what it should look like. I mean, that's not a brilliant photo, but it gives you an idea. And here, uh, this next picture now, is what the power supply should look like. So you've got that red neon lamp. Uh, I mean, I can put that back. I think the black on my power supply, the black sort of paint on there, was probably glue for the uh, for the fascia, glue the fascia on. 
So again, I don't know why that would have been taken off. So there we are, that's that. Um, yeah, as I say, I'll show you some pictures of the underneath in a minute. Um, what I used to do, I, I know some people have trouble as a local amateur friend of mine. He used to have a, I forget what it was, was it the old um, Yesu? He had the uh, FT101. I have one. Um, yeah, a lot of it's hybrid valve and transistor. And um, the same principle, you've got a Pi network in the output of the transmitter. What you do is, uh, you know, you turn it on the frequency you want and the rest of it. This here you, you, is that that's net, standby, and transmit. All right, so you put it onto net, you go on the frequency you want, set your VFO. You turn the transmitter on, then you you put that at maximum. This is the load. This is the tune. You tune the, the anode of the, of the valve. You tune that for a dip in anode current. All right, then you load. You bring this out. You load the aerial. Dip it again. Load it. Dip it. And all the time the current's coming up. You're getting more and more anode current on the PA valve. What I used to do, a bit of a palaver, but it, it really is the correct way to do it. I used to stick it into a 50 ohm dummy load, like KW107 ATU. Switch that to dummy load, okay? So, so you're then tuning your transmitter into 50 ohm load. Do all your tuning up. Once you've got that right, then I'd switch to the aerial, okay? Not not the load. Switch it to the aerial, and then on on the separate aerial tuning unit, I would then load the aerial. So. It, that's the correct way to do it. That's how I always used to do it anyway. I think a lot of people just tune everything for maximum smoke, which I suppose is all right. But uh, I, I just like to do it properly. Well, I had a dummy load built into the KW107 Supermatch, so I thought, well, let's use it. You know, that's what it's for. Um, OK, so that's that. Let's move on. Have a look underneath the, the chassis. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Um, Kodar. The manufacturer were based in Southwick, West Sussex. I'm in Worthing. Southwick is about six miles that way. And a friend of mine, who only lives a couple of miles away from me, I've, I've known him forever since I was in my teens, used to work with him at the radio and TV workshop. He went and worked for Kodar. So uh, there we are, small world, you see. This came from the factory, which is only six miles that way, back in the 1960s. My friend worked there. I never owned one of these, I never had one. They were, I think they're about 16 quid, which was expensive then, that was a lot of money. I don't know whether that was a whole lot, um, just the transmitter or, or what, but so there we are. Anyway, have a look at this. This is underneath the chassis. There you are, you can see just about on the far left there, that little red capacitor, that little puff, uh, just across the by that trimmer across the base of the oscillator coil. Uh, that's that's been added <laughs> to uh, pull the oscillator onto the lower end of the medium wave band. Lovely jubbly, whatever next. But as you can see, quite nicely built, some RF chokes there. But the shame about the corrosion on the chassis, that, that'll clean off though, but uh, just a bit of a palaver to have to do that. Uh, next shot here, that's the back of the power supply. You can see some corrosion there as well. But as I say, it'll clean off. So uh, yeah, rather a nice piece of kit. Uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valves in it. I don't know what they are. I won't all list them all, but um, there's a uh, 6BW6 is the uh, the PA valve. And also by the look of it, the, the modulator, 6BW6, quite a nice valve. Um, yeah, there were various valves in those days, but uh, that was quite a popular one, especially in small transmitters like this. So that's it. That's the Kodar 85, uh, 160 meter and 80 meter AM. Oh, and CW jack socket there for your Morse key. Do 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 do. There we are. Kodar 85. I think before Kodar were in Southwick, they were in Worthing. Uh, I'm more or less central Worthing, they were in East Worthing, so kind of a mile away. <laughs> yeah, happy days. Uh, they also made a receiver, I don't know all the model numbers, it's all on the internet no doubt. They made a receiver, power supplies, I don't think they made any big stuff like 100 watt transmitters or anything, but um, 
Yes, a shame. Of course, I suppose back in those days there were dozens of little companies everywhere, weren't there? Knocking up this, that and the other. Now, just have a quick look at my KW107, uh, the Supermatch. This was made uh, just up in, where was it, Dulwich? Yeah, Dartford. So that's only, what, 50 miles north of me. I mean, they, uh, they no longer exist, of course, as Kodar don't, but... Uh, there we are. Anyway, happy days. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye for now.